All right, here we go, painting the dead writer, as seen in the previous uh, painting video. Uh, don't really have a plan uh, to start with. Um, just deciding with a light flesh tone for the horse. So I'm starting with some Vallejo green ochre, applied very haphazardly, and just trying to get it uh, all over the place. This is not necessarily the um, the main color I'm going for. It's just I need to get some paint on the figure figure out exactly what I'm doing because I uh, had no plan going into this figure. So after applying um, the green ochre mixed in some uh, beige and just dry brushing that on. The, the thing about undead figures is um, they're really easy to just dry brush and uh, wash to paint them up. Um, all the little cracks and Bubbles and dead skin, stuff fluffing, fluffing off makes them kind of difficult to paint uh, standard, easy, or my standard clean way. Uh, they just lend themselves very well to dry brushing and highlighting, and they're very hard to, um, you know, just paint delicately with a uh, brush in the standard method. So, uh, adding a bit more beige now, and a bit more dry brushing on the horse. Well, we can see the difference from the previous dry brush layer. This one's done a bit lighter and concentrate more on the uh, the upper areas, areas where there's more uh, detail that needs highlighting. So now that that's done, I'm starting to paint the little boils or lesions or whatever is all over this horse, starting with some uh, game color uh, dwarf flesh which is a little orange. I'm not sure why I picked this color, but um, it, in the end it's going to work. Now I mixed in just a little bit of white to the dwarf flesh and adding some little uh, little white heads to the pimples all over the horse. The thing about undead is um, you could basically sculpt anything onto them and uh, just call it some sort of lesion or what have you. Uh, <laughs> now I'm going back and uh, doing the same thing again with squid pink. Um, just so there's a variation in the uh, the boils, let's call it boils. And so some of the ones I didn't paint, or some of the ones already painted, just going over them again with uh, the pink flesh, and then again adding a little bit of white to it to uh, highlight it a bit. Now for the uh, obvious sores, I'm using some uh, dark flesh tone to paint those in. Now I'm taking that same dark flesh tone color and going over and applying a, um, a spot wash, uh, concentrating on the the lesiony, boily area around the uh, neck, and uh, they put a lot of lesions around its crotch for some reason, which is a, a little creepy. But also going around and uh, just various areas of the horse, somewhat concentrating the recesses, but basically all over. It could look as a, a dry blood or you know some of the muscle work from underneath is uh, showing through perhaps. And then repeating that process again with some purple. I believe this is a uh, hexed lichen from the game color range. And once again, mostly over those same areas. The red went over, but over a few different areas as well. I'm trying to go for a a bruised, you know, bruised look, black and blue look to the model and just just adding some color essentially trying to create what people would would think a uh, zombified 
rotted horse would look like. And then going over it once again, this time with uh, some game color stormy blue. This color mainly concentrating just on the recesses, not putting it over uh, such a large area as the previous two colors. Again, just trying to go for that bruised uh, black and blue look. And the thing about undead models is you can paint them basically however you want because people really don't know how undead zombies are supposed to look. Uh, I mean, you can go and look at reference of dead things if you want, but A, it's it's a little creepy if you do that, and B, they usually don't look how people think they look. Um, I'm not saying go look up dead bodies, but uh, you'd be kind of surprised it's they don't look like this, but people expect zombies to look like this. And the final step for the horse is giving it a, a light wash of a Vallejo Umber Shade. This is just to add a little bit of shade to the model and also kind of tone all the colors down, make them a bit more uh, cohesive. All right, working on the skull head now. Contemplating painting it more as like a desiccated flesh, but uh, in the end, went for uh, bone. And um, started with the green ochre like I did on the skin, hoping to make it match, and then I added uh, bone, excuse me, game color bone white to that. And started dry brushing it and then going over with a, a brush to smooth it out a bit. That could speed up your painting if you dry brush over something and then apply some regular highlights. It'll smooth out the dry brushing. It's quicker, but it makes it, uh, it, smoo it smooths everything out so you don't see the roughness of the dry brushing. And then to the bone, adding just a little bit of white and adding a few more highlights here and there. Now I'm going around adding a little bit of the uh, dark flesh tone wash, same as I did on the skin, to give a little, little effect of blood. Um, kind of thinking maybe, you know, the the skin just got pulled off the uh, the horse's head. At least that was my uh, rationale at the time. And it helps, you know, to blend it into the rest of the horse. The fact that I'm adding the same color to the head as the uh, the body, even though they're you know one's rotted flesh and the other one's just bone. Now going through and painting the um, the jaw, the inside of the jaw black, and uh, this this was definitely a mistake. Um, usually when painting mouths and, and before you paint the teeth, you paint everything black, so then the uh, the teeth will really stand out. And uh, the problem is the mouth is so big on this um, this horse and the teeth are so huge. I really didn't need to do that. It's, it's way too much contrast. I should have just used a dark brown. And I compounded the problem by adding black into the little holes around the snout as well. And uh, it just, I really didn't like the look. And you'll find out later what I did to fix this. Now moving on to the, the writer. Started with um, what did I use here? I think chocolate brown. Vallejo model chocolate brown. My idea was since there was bone and dead flesh on the horse, I wanted a different looking flesh for the rider, so I went for more of a, a dark brownish mummy type of, type of look to him. So starting with the undercoat of the chocolate brown, and then to that, started working with a base coat of uh, Vallejo 
Panzer Ace Dark Mud. And here's the dark mud being applied now, slightly off camera. And then to this, uh, the dark mud for the highlights, I first added uh, U.S. Uh, field drab. I was about to say olive drab. U.S. field drab, which is very muted brown. And then to that, I added some uh, game color khaki for the final highlights. And here's the final step of highlighting on the writer's flesh. This is with um, the khaki step. So this is a lot of khaki added to that previous uh, mixture. Now, moving on to the uh, where we oh the leather-ish armor that he's wearing. Uh, painting this in my standard leather recipe, which is starting off with a undercoating of uh, SS Camo Black Brown from the Vallejo model color range. I use that color a whole bunch. And then from there, base coating with some uh, model color flat earth. And you've probably seen this in a couple other videos. I, I use this recipe quite a bit. And just leaving the camel black brown just, just in the recesses where, the, um, where one segment of armor stops and another one starts. first highlight is um, Game Color Cobra Leather, and that was applied, I think I, I missed a step there somewhere, and you know, that was applied, and then to that I added some desert yellow to, uh, to highlight just the edges. And I remember at the time I was thinking I wanted to make the rider, or the whole model here, a bit more light in the colors used rather than going for just really dark colors and um, plans change as you as you paint a model especially when you don't go into one with without a plan like I did here next thing getting painted is the um, I don't know what to call it tarp that he's sitting on it's got some ragged uh, not barding but uh, horse covering that he's sitting on. So uh, the starting with the SS Camo Black Brown. Use that a lot. And to that I'm mixing in, um, well I will be mixing in some beige. Oh, I forgot to mention I did paint the rider's face the same color as the horse's head so they match. And here I am painting all over it. I wasn't really happy how the horse head came out. Uh, with the black I added and um, it, I, I did a crappy job of painting it. So I decided to repaint it. Uh, we'll be going over that a little bit later in the video, but that's why I am destroying all the work I just did and trying to return it to its uh, original brown state with the uh, SS Camo Black Brown. Now back to the, uh, the tarp. Uh, highlighting with just two colors here, using, using uh, beige brown and just mixing a little bit of that into the uh, SS Camo Black Brown and then repeating this up a few times for each highlight so adding one drop to the Black Brown to highlight it and then add another drop and another drop and going probably about three highlights so only highlighting with just using two colors you can do it you just have to be careful not to go too far with the highlights And I believe at this step I'm using just uh, almost pure beige brown. 
actually no, I'm sorry, this is a, a still a mixture here. Uh, pure beige brown that's just used just on the very recesses, or excuse me, just on the very edges of the model. Because when you're only using two colors, you have to be very, very cautious not to uh, over highlight anything. Okay, now I'm just highlighting with simply pure beige brown, and uh, that's just going just on the very, uh, just on the tips and the edges of the uh, the tarp to add that uh, extra bit of contrast. Working on the cloak now. Now, I thought I was going to go with very light colors. I ended up going a bit darker, painting the cloak uh, in purple, since I used a bit of purple on the horse, figuring to match those colors. It should come out pretty well. Uh, using hex lichen here, but it's mixed with a very, very large amount of black. And because I did decide to darken the colors up. And um, the cloak is difficult to paint because it's a very large, broad, f roughly flat area, which uh, does take uh, some careful work to uh, paint something like this. The key to painting areas like this is to keep your paint very, very thin and going over it in many, many, many. Uh, layers. So normally on other parts of this figure I'm using maybe three to four highlights, averaging three. The cloak actually has probably closer to ten highlights. And um, just adding a tiny bit more of hex lichen every time and keeping the paints very thin. And I'll also be very careful not to uh, not to over highlight the cloak because you don't want to over highlight a, a flat surface because then it it's going to look really weird. You're putting contrast where it shouldn't. And work continues on the cloak here. Again, just adding more hex lichen. I never work my way all the way up to using pure hex lichen, so it's always a mixture. Again, just very, very slowly. It's very tedious. But there's, there's no other way to uh, get results like this. You can't really dry brush something like this or wash it. Expect it to come out, well, I won't say perfect, but uh, good. Let's go with the word good. And then for the highlight, the final highlight, just for the edging, I did add just a tiny amount of uh, ghost gray, which is a very light, very cool gray color to the mix. It's a small drop, and this is just going just on the very edges to highlight the edges of the cloak, so you get a nice crisp edge, you know where the cloak uh, visually ends by highlighting with that uh, nice clean crisp edge. Now I decided to move on to the armor because uh, I knew how I wanted to paint that uh, but I didn't know about the rest of the horse. Using uh, Vallejo Air Steel mixed with black, just a tiny amount of black. Uh, rather than using like dark metallics and then highlighting up the lighter metallics like starting with uh, gun metal and then working up to steel when working on uh, metallics. I've been adding black to steel to tone it down and to darken it. And uh, that's been working a lot better lately because it, it, it darkens it so you can do your shading and also it dulls it a bit since you're adding uh, opaque paint to the metallics. So I got applied all over with just a small highlight of um, just plain steel. And now I'm going over with some uh, Vallejo Panzer Aces Dark Rust. And this is done in, <coughs> excuse me, three layers. The first one, it's very thin coating here. The first layer doesn't stick very well to the uh, to the metallics. I guess it's because of the glossy nature of metallic paints, but uh, it doesn't stick very well. But once you get that first coat on, even though it's very subtle, when you apply the next ones, it becomes much more uh, much more intense, 
much easier to apply. So this was done in three layers, making sure each one is completely dry uh, before moving on to the next. That's very important. And after those three layers were dry, moving on to the light rust and applying it basically in the same manner. The dark rust was basically just kind of to prepare the surface uh, to give it some tonal variation. The real color I wanted to use here was the light rust because it's much more orange, much much more. It looks more like standard uh, rust. And again, this is being applied basically as a spot wash um, in the recesses, but applying it here and there as well, wherever I think some color is needed. And I applied this in, I think, two layers. First one being very light, the second one going back slightly thicker. Again, to get some variation uh, here or there, wherever I thought uh, it was needed. And not shown here, I decided to go back later and add a uh, Vallejo black shade wash uh, over the armor in a few spots where it needed some extra shade, like between all the uh, the slats on the neck and uh, the joints around the legs. Now moving on to the gold. I uh, didn't want to use bright gold, so uh, a lot of times I'll mix flat earth in uh, with gold, so I think it gives it a nicer tone. Uh, that was a bit too uh, a bit too bright in this case, so yeah, I believe here, yeah, this is how it looked with the flat earth mixed into it, and wasn't liking it, it just wasn't the right tone, so I went back and mixed um, burnt umber with the gold, metallic gold instead, and that, that darkened it a bit more. It made it look more like a um, bronze color, which I probably could have used just straight out of the bottle rather than mixing this up, but oh well. You can see the difference now between the two colors. It's looking much, much nicer, I think, with a more, uh, more bronze look. And for the highlights, I just added more gold to the mix. Uh, again, at the end, um, I felt that this was not enough. Um, so off camera, I added, uh, went back and added a bit more highlights to the, uh, the bronze gold areas just by mixing in up some, uh, steel and gold together and applying it around the edges. Okay, back to the horse's head now. I had a better idea what I wanted to do. Starting off with a undercoat of uh, English uniform and painting the horse's head the same as the skeleton, skeletons, the rider's head. So that way they match. And this time not relying on dry brushing, trying to hand paint it, which I'm more uh, comfortable doing and more happy with the, re the results. Then to the English uniform, I'm adding some uh, a rocky sand, and that's going to be close to my base coated uh, my base coat color for the bone. And there's lots of different ways you could paint bone. I mean, and also for different effects, if you can use more warmer brown colors, if you want to represent something like a, f a fresh skull, for lack of a better word, or you could use more colors like gray. Or what have you. I use uh, khaki lots of times to undercoat uh, bone. Sometimes, you know, it gives a more gray look, something more ancient. And just adding um, a bit more rocky sand each time, doing a couple highlights, picking things out so they're a bit cleaner than it was before. And again, painting the writer's head the same color as this, so uh, you have some matching colors. And they uh, they complement each other since they're the same, and it makes sense. The rider's head, the horse's head, both the same colors. Now for the um, the horns, 
Uh, again, this is sort of my standard horn recipe, starting off with an undercoat of um, flat earth. And then over that, I'm mixing in um, some bone white. <coughs> Excuse me, some bone white. And applying the same color uh, to the teeth as well, starting with the, uh, the flat earth. And here we go with the mixture. Uh, sometimes I put just straight bone white uh, over the flat earth. Sometimes I mix them together. It kind of depends on, on the size of the horns that I'm painting. If it's a very small horn, just a drop of bone white over it. If it's a larger horn that needs a bit more um, subtle shading and gradation, then I'll, I'll mix them together. So this is uh, bone white, which is a tiny amount of uh, flat earth applied to it. Or mixed into it, excuse me. And then um, working towards the tips of the horns, adding a bit of white to the mix. All right, painting the horse's tail and mane is the last thing to do here. Uh, I decided to go with bat black. Originally, I was going to do brown, but I uh, went black. And a lot of people ask me how to highlight black, so here you go. Starting off with a base coat of black, obviously. And to that, I made a mixture of, um, for the highlights, made a mixture of black, stormy blue, and somber gray. And it's about a 50-50 mix of black and the stormy blue and just with a tiny tiny amount of the somber gray and so that's what's being applied now so, sort of a heavy-handed um, highlight uh, excuse me a heavy-handed uh, dry brushing since it's such a uh, coarse area working on I guess you call it the second highlight now just added a tiny tiny bit more of the somber gray now I'm going fairly blue with these highlights because I wanted there's some blue on the horse and I want it to match. Um, if you want a more black look, um, you could um, of course. If I was painting something like a cloak, this would be applied just to the edges. In the case of the, because uh, this is hair and it's kind of flowing, I'm, I'm using this highlight a bit more than I would if I was painting something more static. So this is getting just applied roughly to the tips of the hair. But again, you have wafting hair. It has, you know, it's kind of flowing and it's not very static. So I'm going a bit... Uh, bit more with the highlight of that color. And for the uh, other areas I didn't paint on the rider earlier, I decided to use the same color as well. So you have your nice triangle color composition 
colors using being on you know top bottom or in this case left right and uh, left right and top now last thing to paint here is the horns uh, I was gonna delete this because as you can see not much of it got on the video because these things are so awkward they're hard to paint and uh, just couldn't keep them in frame but uh, I figured I show them to you this is how I paint a fade starting off with the bone colors I used before uh, starting base coated with SS camel black brown then using a uh, flat earth mixed with uh, actually I think I use beige to do the highlights and just working my way up the horns adding more and more beige to the flat earth each time and there's probably a dozen mixtures on these small areas because I, I want that a very grand gradation effect to the horns and it's almost like wet blending not quite but uh, the paint is fairly thick because I don't want it filling in all the uh, the runes but uh, the flat areas of the horns get a highlight um, slowly working your way up towards the tips and then the edges uh, the highlights go down a little bit further so there's a bit more contrast between the uh, the previous layers and just a matter of you know mixing a little bit more Bayesian every time slowly working your way up so and you can get uh, color gradations doing that same thing so here's the final figure um, it's a bit messy uh, that's the thing about undead they're easy to paint um, because you can just slap a bunch of dry brushing and washes over them uh, lots of the areas on them are not very definable you know is that bubbling skin is it rotten skin or is that part of his ragged clothing I find them very hard to pick out so Undead models for me, they're, they're easy to paint, but it's, it's, I'm not, they're not very enjoyable because I really don't like using a lot of dry brushing and washing, but they're, it, Undead models lend themselves very well to those effects. So, this isn't my favorite figure, but it is painted now, and so I can move on to something else. Something with less uh, boils around the groin area, and something uh, that I'll enjoy painting a bit more. But there you go. Uh, that's how I paint undead model. A little bit, uh, a little bit quicker, a little bit messier than my normal uh, work. But it's done. Time for the next project. Thanks for watching.